Success isn't a secret, right? You set a goal and the distance between where you are now and your goal is a certain amount of action that you need to complete. And we all have a rough idea of the sort of things we should be doing to be successful. Work hard, build good habits, take care of our health. We've read lots of books and watched lots of YouTube how-to videos, yet why is it that some people are able to effortlessly apply the information that they consume while others end up in an endless loop of consumption? Well, my experience is that there's actually something really sinister going on in the world that prevents the majority of people from being able to take necessary action, which I'm going to uncover for you in this video. I'll also give you four easy to implement steps that are designed to not only make taking action effortless, they're designed to turn taking action into a default state. Now, a quick warning before we begin, this will require you to keep an open mind as I'll be asking you to essentially destroy old programming and adapt new programming. So let's begin. Is this the weakest generation ever? This generation is constantly critiqued as being the weakest in the history of humanity. And from what I've been able to gather from history, I tend to agree. I think the primary reason for this is what I like to describe as external first mindset. I'll explain. So not that long ago, if we wanted to use information as a tool, we literally had to get into a car and drive to a library, which was only open during certain hours. Before there were libraries, if we really wanted to solve a difficult problem, we may have to dedicate our entire life to solving that problem. So to put that into perspective, those same problems we can now solve in about five seconds with Google. So in the past, if we wanted to build good habits or start a business, we had no choice but to consider these questions first for ourselves internally. And that's precisely where we arrive at the core problem behind why some people, most people, seem crippled to take action. It's because they have no internal. Having no internal, they can't possibly trust themselves to take action, so they reflexively just cast the net of their consciousness out into the external world, hoping to find some sort of magical knowledge that will give them the confidence to take action. However, having no internal, they're also not capable of understanding what true knowledge is. And so they waste their lives searching for knowledge that they're doomed to never find. By contrast, if you take any successful person and you ask them, how did you become successful? they're not gonna tell you that they learned from a YouTube course or uh, they're successful because of a specific book they read. Now, that's not to say that they won't reference those information sources as potentially key pieces in their overall development, but at the end of the day, information sources are just that, they're information sources. Successful people use information to sharpen the blade, but they are the blade. By contrast, most of us are just reading about the blade, uh, imagining what it's like to be the blade, and, and we rust and become dull in the process. So how do we make the shift from the modern default state of external first mindset back to internal first mindset? How to actually be the blade instead of just fucking theorizing about it? Here are the four steps. Step one, reprogram our understanding of knowledge. Books are not knowledge, books are just information in a raw state. Good information as well as bad information. And frankly, most modern books actually make us weaker by reading them. Mel Robbins' five second rule is a perfect example of this. It's a great idea that can be explained in about 15 seconds. Here's the explanation taken directly from her website. The five second rule is simple. If you have an instinct to act on a goal, you must physically move within five seconds or your brain will kill it. The moment you feel an instinct or desire to act on a goal or a commitment, use the rule. When you feel yourself hesitate before doing something that you know you should do, count five, four, three, two, one, go and move towards action. Okay, great, well, thank you. Mel Robbins, uh, wait, can you actually uh, just do me a favor and explain one more thing for me? Can you explain why the fuck we need a 240 page book to explain this? Are you kidding me? Anyone who reads all 240 pages of this book is weaker by the end of it because they will have wasted, how long does it take to read 240 pages? Seven hours? They will have wasted seven hours reading about the theory of something that can be applied instantly. Watching informational YouTube videos is no different. The bottom line here is any information that we consume is not knowledge until we've directly applied it. Before application, information exists only as theory. Even after applying it once, in most cases, it's still not quite knowledge, it's imitation. Knowledge is only achieved when we apply what we consume enough to be able to formulate our own critical thoughts on it by observing our own direct experiences with it. 
Developing an internal first mindset isn't remotely possible until we reprogram ourselves to see knowledge in this way. To know the path is not to walk the path. To walk the path is to know the path. Step two, never read more than one chapter or watch more than one video. So now that we've defined what knowledge is, let's put it to the test in real life. Books are separated into chapters for a reason. As nownovel.com describes, they give the reader space to pause and digest the plot developments and communications of the preceding chapter. When it comes to self-help or business type books, uh, chapters generally start by outlining a specific problem or concept, then they go on to solve the problem, usually with relatable examples, and almost always wrap up with some sort of important takeaway or set of actionable steps to follow. Funny, that's the uh, exact same format of these videos. Chapters are literally designed for us to be able to consume information in manageable chunks that we can then review and apply. When someone with an internal first mindset reads a chapter of a book, let's say they're reading a chapter dealing with the development of good habits. As they're reading, they'll be simultaneously considering how they can apply this information within their own lives. What sort of experiences do they already have developing good habits, uh, success, failures, and everything else? And how does that compare to what they're reading? And perhaps the most important question, uh, is the author making a compelling enough case for them to actually try implementing what's being taught? And to start to ask lots of questions and reflect against our own experiences while we consume information is how we go from mindless consumption to critical consumption, which is a key characteristic of internal first mindset. The same applies to YouTube videos. I know even videos like the one you're watching now can feel enlightening, but how much of what you're consuming now will you just forget a few hours later? YouTube, like all social media platforms, is designed to keep us consuming. And so if we watch five videos like this one before we have even the faintest impulse to think, oh wait, I am wasting my life right now. <laughs> that is a hallmark of the external first mindset that we're trying to reprogram right now. Step three, consume information only when we can quickly apply it. If we like to start our mornings at the gym and we know we're gonna work on our business afterwards, then our warm up on the treadmill at the gym is a perfectly good time to consume information about fitness or business. Before I work on these videos, I usually like to spend an hour or so studying philosophy so that when I start writing, I look for ways to apply what I'm studying. What if you're just sitting on your couch watching a video about how to improve your discipline if you know you're just gonna be spending the next bunch of hours playing video games? It's not a good time. Eating breakfast and watching a video about how to be more creative when you won't be doing anything creative anytime soon? Useless. If you can't immediately apply it, don't consume it. Sitting on the couch may just be a good time for you to rest or meditate or play video games. Breakfast is a great time for you to think about the day in front of you, maybe do a, a quick review of messages or emails so you can figure out how the first part of your day needs to be organized. Shifting to an internal first mindset means not only knowing how to consume information, but also when to consume it. Step four, never consume any information without thinking about it ourselves first. So this is the final and most important step, the culmination of this whole video and the last three steps that we talked about. Imagine just for a second what our lives would be like if we thought about questions internally before searching externally for the answers. How do I start a business? How do I learn to dance? How do I work out? When we consider these questions ourselves first, before we look to external information sources, we may be blown away by the results. Here's a personal example. So when I first started dancing salsa, after a few months, I got to a point where I was no longer enjoying the classes. I just hated the music. So instead of going online to search externally for a solution, I thought about this question internally first. And after a bit of introspection, I figured out that to enjoy the music, that perhaps I should study the flow of the music and understand how different instruments and harmonies work together. Study the origins, understand how Cuban and Puerto Rican salsa evolved into their own unique styles. Uh, the tragic story of Hector Laveau and how that translated into his music. So I'm uh, Puerto Rican by blood, and I called my mom, who loves salsa, and I asked her a few questions. And, and she told me uh, stories about how she would go with her cousins to Central Park to watch the Fania All-Stars during the early 70s. And I learned that the short, friendly, chubby guy that came to my house for Christmas that one year was actually Willie Colon, like one of the pioneers of salsa. So by doing all of that, not only did I come to appreciate salsa music, I came to absolutely fall in love with it. 
Now, I listen to salsa music all the time. Uh, when a great song comes on, I will instinctively move my body or, or feel the urge to get up and dance. Whenever any of the songs from Fania All Stars are on, I imagine my mother listening to the same songs in Central Park all those years ago, and I, I feel bliss. My point here is that I wanted to love salsa because I saw it as a beautiful vehicle for me to be able to express myself through movement. And when I started failing, instead of looking to the external, I went internal first. And there I was able to figure out and discover you know, what I ought to do to succeed. Now imagine if we considered every one of our challenges or goals with an internal first mindset. If we're trying to develop a habit, uh, we can first use our own experiences trying to build habits, uh, successes, failures, before looking externally. If we want to start our own business, what sort of observations have we made about previous jobs we've had within different types of industries? What made those businesses successful, uh, unsuccessful? How could we have improved them? I started my career as a freelance website designer, having never read a book or studied anything about design. I just started designing template websites and went from there. Uh, to date, I've never even so much as clicked onto a YouTube video pertaining to any aspect of how to start or, or grow a business. Although I will occasionally listen to podcasts featuring business people that I respect. And I'm not saying that books or YouTube videos are bad. I just think that they're overrated. Building a business is mostly just common sense. Figure out how to solve someone else's problem and then figure out how to solve that problem at scale. Internal first.